एट ईयर ओल्ड चाइल्ड हैज ए लो ग्रेड फीवर अर्थराइटिस देर इज ए कोलिकी एबडोमिनल पेन देर इज ए कोलिकी एबडोमिनल पेन एंड परप्यूरिक रास लोकलाइज ऑन द लोअर एक्सट्रीमिटी लेबोरेटरी स्टडीज रिवील्ड ए ग्वाइक पॉजिटिव स्टूल रिवील ए ग्वाइक पॉजिटिव स्टूल यूरिनलिसिस विद द रेड ब्लड सेल्स कास्ट एंड माइल्ड प्रोटीन यूरिया एंड नॉर्मल प्लेटलेट काउंट सी हेयर वी हैव द नॉर्मल प्लेटलेट काउंट सो इफ द नॉर्मल प्लेटलेट काउंट वी कैन रूल आउट द इडियोपैथिक थ्रोम्बोसाइटोपेनिक परपुरा सी इन द ऑप्शन ओनली थ्रोम्बोसाइटोपेनिक मीन्स थ्रोम्बोसाइटोपीनिया सो देर इज ए डिक्रीजिंग ऑफ वट प्लेटलेट सो द प्लेटलेट काउंट इज नॉर्मल वी रूल आउट द इडियोपैथिक थ्रोम्बोसाइटोपीनिया इट विल नोट विद आंसर then we have the post streptococcal glomerulonephritis is there any history of the any bacteria is there any history of any related anything related to the kidney so no so that is not post streptococcal glomerulonephritis systemic lupus erythematosus we already studied yesterday what was that butterfly rash malar rash all these rashes type of things will be there or maybe lupus nephritis can be there so that will be not be the answer rocky mountain spotted fever again that will be th that again the not answer because uh, the, you know uh, about the rocky mountain spotted fever already and we will discuss little bit also now the another remaining question is hinox colon purpura so that is what answer and this is example of what vasculitis so today we will discuss about the vasculitis only so today what we will discuss we will discuss about the vasculitis only okay so let's discuss about all those vasculitis see the all the vasculitis these are very very important topics so let's see we have the topic that is for today that is vasculitis vasculitis okay what is the vasculitis see whenever the itis comes whenever the is anything whenever the itis comes so it means we have whenever the itis comes it means this is what inflammation what is this this is what inflammation the itis comes this is what inflammation okay let us write it here vasculitis see vasculitis what itis means that is the inflammation so what what is vasculitis see it is a destructive inflammation within vessels hole it is the destructive inflammation within vessel hole so within the vessel hole it is what it is the destructive inflammation so within the vessel hole it is the destructive inflammation and when there will be the destructive inflammations it will lead to the ischemia it will lead to ischemia it will lead to the ischemia and organ damage it will lead to the ischemia and organ damage okay now remember that ki there is a like uh, no gold standard diagnostic test or the diagnostic uh, like uh, criteria for the vasculitis but we studied that vasculitis it is a destructive inflammations within the vessels walls and when will when there will be the destructive inflammation there will it will lead to the ischemia and there will be the organ damage as well there one more conditions we called it vasculopathy there is one more condition that we called it vasculopathy see vasculitis and vasculopathy pathy means something disorder so in vasculopathy there is a endothelial there is a endothelial microvascular damage there is endothelial microvascular damage will be there the endothelial microvascular damage will be there and due to endothelial microvascular damage there will be the thrombus formation there will be the thrombus formation and this thrombus formations will lead to the hypoxia this, thr this thrombus formation will lead to the hypoxia and there will be the fibrosis so remember if we having the vasculitis that is ischemia and organ damage but we know that if any in blood vessels if we have the thrombus formation and thrombus formation occur this is what endothelial cells this is what endothelial cells that lines the blood vessels and when this endothelial microvascular damage will be there so there will be the thrombus formation that will lead to the hypoxia and and the site of the uh, damage there will be the fibrosis will be occur so 
दिस इज वॉट मिनिमल इन्फ्लॉमेशन बट दिस इज वॉट डिस्ट्रक्टिव वेस्कुलोपैथी इज वॉट मिनिमल इन्फ्लॉमेशन वेस्कुलोपैथी इज वॉट मिनिमल इन्फ्लॉमेशन बट वेस्कुलाइटिस इफ वी टोक दैट इज वॉट डिस्ट्रेक्टिव इन्फ्लॉमेशन वेस्कुलाइटिस इज वॉट डिस्ट्रेक्टिव इन्फ्लॉमेशन सो यू नीड टू रिमेम्बर दिस थिंग्स देन ऑल्सो रिमेम्बर द वेस्कुलोपैथी वी कैन हैव एग्जाम्पल लाइक स्कलेरोडर्मा दैट वी स्टडीड ये स्टडे and the video also i will put it today so remember scleroderma this example of the vasculopathy now to classify the vasculitis into the like large vessels medium vessels and the small vessels we we have the one criteria and which criteria we have that is revised chapel hill classification that is revised chapel hill classification the revised chapel hill classification it is a for classification of vasculitis and this criteria it is based on this criteria is based on size of blood vessels this criteria is based on the size of blood vessels see if there will can be the large vessels there can be the medium vessels or there can be the small vessels large vessels like large vessels like aorta the large vessels like aorta then medium vessels like coronary artery mesenteric artery renal artery these are the medium vessels there can be the small vessels small vessels are like examples we have the venules we have the venules we have the capillaries we have the arterioles so these are the small vessels so we have the large vessels we have the medium vessels and we have the small vessels so it is classified the chapel hill classification it is based on the size of blood vessels it is classified into three types large vessel vasculitis medium vessel vasculitis and small vessel vasculitis also remember that revised chapel hill classification it is a not a diagnostic criteria it is not a diagnostic criteria uh, besides it is a specific test it is a specific test but less sensitive it is specific test but it is a less sensitive diagnostic not a diagnostic criteria okay now let's the uh, talk about the large vessel vasculitis medium vessel vasculitis and small vessel vasculitis let me open the chat box okay see we have the vasculitis we have the vasculitis now vasculitis we are considering it into the large vessel vasculitis and the large vessels then we have the medium vessels that just i told you and there will be the small vessel vasculitis see the large vessel vasculitis they have the examples like takayasu takayasu arteritis takayasu arteritis and there is a temporal arteritis there is a temporal arteritis this is example of the large vessels in the medium in the medium vessels remember the mnemonic what mnemonic pan this is mnemonic uh, khata bachcha so remember pan khata bachcha this is mnemonics in hindi so you can remember is as the pan ke pan so this is what pan and p pan ke ba pan ke bi or p ke bi for english speaking you can remember just pkb and for hindi you can remember pan khata bachcha bachcha means children so pan khata bachcha so p for we have the periarteritis nodosa i am writing it here periarteritis nodosa periarteritis nodosa then k for remember k for what is that kawasaki disease See all these vasculitis. They are the important topics, and one questions definitely will be asked from here. And B four, what we have the Burgers disease. B four, what we have Burgers disease. B four, what we have Burgers disease. The small vessel vasculitis. This is what medium. This is what medium. Then we have the small vessel vasculitis. The small vessel vasculitis. What can be the example? They have the immune complex. or oh, let me write it here the small vessels vasculitis we can have the immune complex depositions we can have the immune complex 
depositions and other than we have the anka associated we have the anka associated the anka associated vasculitis what is the anca anti nuclear cytoplasmic antibody anti nuclear cytoplasmic antibody what is the anka anti nuclear cytoplasmic antibody what is the immune complex deposition so if there is a immune complex depositions remember in the immune complex depositions you can remember the example that is hinox colon purpura this is hinox colon purpura and also you can remember as the good pasture syndrome hinox colon purpura good pasture syndrome and yesterday we studied about the systemic lupus erythematosus yes remember in systemic lupus erythematosus i told you if there is a immune complex which is the type it is the type 3 hypersensitivity so there is a immune complex and when it this immune will deposit into the blood vessels it cause the vasculitis if anyone remember sle yesterday i told so here we are talking about the vasculitis i hope this is clear till now now let's talk about one by one and we are starting from the hinox colon purpura because hinox colon purpura this is the important from your crook 2 point of view so hinox colon purpura hinox colon purpura see yaar in see first we will study everything about the hinox colon purpura because this is very important topic and later on we will discuss the few uh, important points and we will just revise it into the 2 3 to 4 sentence see uh, before hinox colon purpura write it down which is the most common the most common vasculitis the most common vasculitis in adults i hope voice is not breaking today i put the i bought the new mic so that you can easily remember oh, again the mic has been switched okay so remember that is we have the most common vasculitis in adults that is the most common temporal arteritis the most common temporal arteritis the most uh, sorry the jane cell jane cell temporal arteritis jane cell temporal arteritis which is the most common which is the most common vasculitis the most common vasculitis in children the most common vasculitis in children what is that that is hinox colon purpura hinox colon purpura and this hinox colon purpura this is also known as iga vasculitis we will discuss it why we called it iga vasculitis so this is what most common vasculitis in children okay there is a one more thing vasculitis vasculitis that only seen in children vasculitis that only seen in children so that is pan khata bachcha so bachcha doing very khata so bachcha is eating khata mean eating so bachcha what what the children do they are keep eating so that a vasculitis that only seen in children that is kawasaki disease that is kawasaki disease so that is what kawasaki disease so vasculitis that only seen in children that is what kawasaki disease now let's continue further with the hinox colon purpura see hsp or the hinox colon purpura the hsp or the hinox colon purpura that is hsp so what they it involves the involves the skin they involves the skin so they see this is also known as i just told you this is also known as iga vasculitis this is also known as iga vasculitis so what happened this iga is there so this iga this will deposit this will deposit in skin this will deposit in case of skin so then they can deposit in the git they can deposit in the git so when they will deposit in the git they can deposit uh, they can deposit in the skin they can deposit in the git they can deposit in the joint 
like uh, we studied that uh, about the arthritis they cause the arthralgia and they can deposit in the kidney they can deposit into the kidney okay so these are what like for example when they deposit in the skin so in the skin they cause the rashes in the skin they cause the rashes and these rashes these are the known thrombocytopenic these are the known thrombocytopenic what is the meaning of known thrombocytopenic see thrombocytopenia so means thrombocytopenia means there is a decrease of platelet then we have the palpable so known thrombocytic these are the palpable purpura palpable purpura and what are these these are the symmetricals what are these these are the symmetricals these are the symmetrical findings and pre uh, predominantly where they will present symmetrical where they will present they will present in the extensor aspect they will present in the extensor aspect of lower limbs they will present in the ex in, uh, extensor aspect of the lower limbs and mostly on the gluteal regions or the lower limbs mostly on the gluteus part mostly on the gluteus part so remember these are the these are the palpable purpura and how, why it looks like they are the looks like known thrombocytopenic git like around 50 to 60 percent ig will deposit in the git patient and mostly like in the 50 to 60 percent uh, cases this git abnormality will be followed by rashes so first the rashes will be there after that git abnormality will be there so which is the most common git manifestation the most common git manifestation most common git manifestation what is that colicky abdominal pain see when there will be the git problem so this ig will deposit in the git and they will cause the bowel ischemia what they will cause they cause a the bowel ischemia they have the oxygen problem and the all the supply oxygen supply problem will be there that will cause the colicky abdominal pain that will cause the colicky abdominal pain or we can call it as the abdominal angina or we can call it as the abdominal angina then other symptoms we can have that is bowel angina i just told bowel ischemia they can have the bowel ischemia and we can see there is a blood in the stools blood in stools and the blood in the stools it's occurred due to hemorrhage see if any git problems we will see the blood in the stools and uh, that's why we will uh, this is the guaic stool positive we will do the test the guaic test and that is the guaic stool positive now which is the most dangerous complications of the git that is the into susception the most common dangerous complication the most common dangerous complication of git this is the complication this is what complication the most common dangerous complication of the git is what that is into susception that is into susception see i hope many of you know what is into susception those who don't know see we have one part of our uh, intestines and another another part of intestines so what is there see here we have the this part see this large part of the intestines they will uh, engulf the other part of the intestines and this occur this is known as the into susception it looks like the clo sign say so this is the clo the clo of the any like tiger we can say this is uh, grasping the other part of the intestine so this is known as the into susceptions or the in the on x ray when we see we see the clo sign we see the clo sign most of the sign or the other sign also seen but for now just remember where the clo sign or the into susception the into susception means when the one intestine part they will engulf into the another part so this is the surgery part there we will discuss for now remember which is the most common dangerous complication of the git is what that is into susceptions in some children there can be the scrotal swelling as well in some children we can see scrotal swelling in some children what we can see the scrotal swelling see if you don't know any meaning of uh, any term maybe into susceptions or any other terms you can freely ask me in the chat box okay
I am going from very basics so that you can easily cover everything. Then we have the joint. See, if we have the joint, if there will be the joint, if this IgA uh, or the immunoglobin A that will deposit in joint, so there will be the person will having the difficulty in walking. The person will be having difficulty in walking. The person will not not able to walk. Difficulty in walking. So we can call this as the intermittent claudications because there will be the pain. Also in the joints we can see there is a arthritis. In the joints we can see that there is a arthritis. There will be the arthritis, and this type of this is or this arthritis also known as a K L M N O arthritis. What is that K L M N O arthritis? The K L M N K L M N O arthritis. I am just telling you knee. K for knee. L for lower limbs. L for lower limb. M for migratory. M for migratory. See knee, lower limbs, migratory. Known deforming, known deforming, known deforming oligoarthritis, known deforming oligoarthritis. So you need to remember this is what from here you need to mark that there is a migratory. So in the question you can get the keyword there is a migratory arthritis. So you need to think about it. There it it might be possible. Along with that you will get some like colicky abdominal pain. You will get the tried or the tetrad. There is colic abdominal pain known from palpable purpura that we will discuss with the help of mnemonics. And along with that, you can get the idea that there is a migratory arthritis. So, hundred percent, this will be the answer. Okay. Then other things we can have the it can involve the kidney. So, if there is a kidney involvement, if there is a kidney involvement is there, so remember that if kidney involvement will be there, that is cause the asymptomatic that cause the a Symptomatic microhematuria. They cause the asymptomatic microhematuria. The symptomatic microhematuria. In children, we will see there is the risk of kidney damage, but uh, uh, in adults, we see there is a self-limited glomerulonephritis. We will see the self-limited glomerulonephritis. I hope this is clear. So I am repeating it again. HSP. This is also known as IgA immune complex depositions. Why? Where it from comes IgA? See, if any streptococcal infection bacteria is there, there can be the IgA antibody will increase, and this IgA will be deposit in case of the like skin, the GIT, the joints, or the kidney. When this uh, uh, deposit in the skin, they cause the they form the rashes, and these rashes are the pal they are the purpura that is palpable. And they are the symmetrical. When it, they deposit in the GIT, so we will see there is a colicky abdominal pain or the abdominal angina. So the important point here, they what we will see colicky abdominal pain. If this IgA deposit in the joint, so there will be the difficulty in walking, and the patient will having the pain. Along with that, we will see there is arthritis. What type of arthritis? K L M N O, migratory known deforming oligoarthritis. And which is the most common jointly we will see that is the knee. The knee joint is most predominantly involved. Okay, tell me in oligoarthritis which is the most common joint affected? Oligoarthritis revision. Oligoarthritis which is the most common joint affected? Anyone? Write me in chat box. Oligoarthritis most common joint affected is the. I told, I told, and video also. That is knee joint. That is knee joints. Please revise. Last time tak I may yehi bolta raunga ki revise karo. Till the last time I will say do the revision. If you will able to re do revise whatever time whatever you are the you are so much weak in every subject you didn't study till six year. Believe me if you are uh, listening it properly and you are revising everything perfectly. No one can stop you to reach the all the success or to reach the to pass any exam. So just keep revising and whatever uh, you need to do the uh, you need to do the hard work. Rest, forget, uh, live on the goal. He will do. Okay, so 
let's continue our topic iga we studied the, okay then remember we studied these things now let's finish and revise the hsp again so remember hsp if in the question remember this is associated with this is associated with this is associated with iga this is associated with iga then remember that there is a platelet count will be normal there the platelet count will be normal the platelet count will be normal and in the organs there will be iga depositions in organs there will be the iga deposition in the organs there will be the iga depositions will be there and hsp most probably they seen in the children's or the adults also we can see but most uh, they seen in like adults as well as children kawasaki only seen in the children then uh, for remember hsp we have the palpable pa, uh, palpable parpura so par parpura okay what is p remember this mnemonics parpura so we have p for we have the purpuric rash p4 we having the purpuric rash and this purpuric rash that usually in the lower limbs or mainly in the gluteus part then a4 remember we have the abdominal a4 we have the a4 abdominal pain as well as we have the arthralgia you can remember arthralgia and arthralgia we know what is that that is joint pain will be seen the pain on walking then other a we have the colicky abdominal pain so there will be the abdominal pain r4 what we will having there will be the renal involvement the asymptomatic hematuria asymptomatic hematuria and renal that is the most commonly affected the which organ is the most commonly affected that is the kidney in case of hsp then we have the palpable purpura like purpuric rash or the palpable purpura rash So remember these things, and everything is sorted out. Okay, so HSP, it's very very easy and very 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 important. So this one you need to revise again and again. This all everything is about the concept, and this you need to remember with the help of this mnemonic. So just remember the parpura, and everything is sorted out. Okay. now see the second options we studied that there is rocky mountain spotted fever we have studied that there is a rocky mountain spotted fever see the rocky mountain spotted fever the rocky mountain spotted fever the rocky mountain spotted fever it is caused by the rickettsia rickettsii it is caused by rickettsia rickettsia rickettsii it is caused by the rickettsia rickettsii okay this is the rocky mountain uh, spotted fever so what is the vector for that vector is what that is heart tick the vector is what this is again the like uh, the questions from the croc one we already studied we studied about the rickettsia rickettsii please share the notes after uh if if everything will be perfect till uh, the end i will say if not then it will be problem for me only hai na the rocky mountain spotted fever the rickettsia rickettsii theek hai and the vector is what the vector is the heart tick the vector is what heart tick then uh, you know that uh, we studied about the endemic typhus we studied about the epidemic typhus so this is what endemic rocky mountain spotted fever is what endemic epidemic we studied epidemic typhus rickettsia provazaki i told you in the uh, during my croc one lessons so p means p so p p so rickettsia provazaki rickettsia provazaki so p p rickettsia provazaki and the vector and what is the vector for the provazaki that was a rat flea that was a rat flea here is the vector is what heart tick which vector heart tick what will be the symptoms we will see in this patient we will see fever we will see fever we will see myalgia we will see the rashes and uh, those who ask the notes and uh, those who are thinking i will share the notes i will not share because if i will say i will share the notes you will not make your own notes hai na that i don't want uh, i will share only if you will make your notes just for to make the copy uh, 
uh, whatever you missed i will share the notes but uh, if you will not able to write by yourself i will not go in us share so make sure that you are uh, doing it that perfectly okay because when you are making your oven uh, this is just whatever we miss yeah yeah i and uh, okay yeah, i understand that but uh, make sure that you are uh, making your oven notes because that will connect you your hand to your brain and that you not understand now but uh, you will understand it little bit later when you will uh, like pass 1 2 3 many exams you will pass you will understand that okay this is why this one should i did before theek hai so just make your our notes and uh, i will share whatever is left uh, i will tell you or maybe if anyone is making uh, the notes on ipad or any platform please they can share that will be more beneficial for everyone so there is a symptoms we have the fever there will be have the myalgia there will be the rashes so uh, the rashes mainly they start from the palms and the soles rashes mainly starts from the palms and soles okay what is the treatment also remember for this because they ask the treatment as well so treatment is the doxy cycline the treatment is the doxy cycline rocky mountain spotted fever rickets rickets vector hartic fever palgia rashes doxy cycline done 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 by finish okay then we have the next one so uh, i hope you understand it now so we will see they see we have the low grade fever okay we have the arthritis we have the colicky abdominal pain and a purpuric rash localized on the lower extremity there is a guaic positive stones because we know that there is involvement of the git urine analysis urine analysis with the red blood cell cast and mild proteinuria and normal platelet count so i to just told you there is a non thrombocytopenic so the platelet count will be the ठीक है, so that is what, that is Hinoch colon vasculitis or also known as the IgA vasculitis. This is that is also known also known as IgA vasculitis. I hope this is clear. Now let's continue with our vasculitis topics because from the vasculitis we will cover able to cover around twenty questions, around twenty questions from only vasculitis. from all the sub, all the bases whether it is surgery or whatever see uh, after the we studied about okay let's let's continue with the again the as we are talking about the small vessel vasculitis so let's continue again with the anca associated anca associated anca i just told you anca i just told you what is that anyone anti nuclear cytoplasmic anti body anti nuclear cytoplasmic anti body seen anca associated vasculitis or the uh, we will see there is a wagner's granulomatosis there is example like wagner's granulomatosis what happen in the wagner's granulomatosis this is also known as granulomatosis with the granulo matosis with polyangiitis the granulomatosis with polyangiitis granulomatosis with polyangiitis so we will see a triad which triad we will able to see the triad of granuloma the triad of granuloma so we will see the triad of granuloma in the blood vessels this is my blood vessels we will see the granuloma in kidney we will see the granuloma in kidney so this is my kidney then we will see the granuloma in lungs we will see the granuloma in lungs okay we will see the granuloma in lungs just uh, for your understanding so these are the lungs then kidney and we have the blood vessels so this granuloma we will be able to see in the blood vessels in the kidney and in the lungs other than that we will get the triad of the symptoms the triad of the symptoms we will get that is the like symptoms we can write that is we will see or the complications we will see that is e and t so e for remember that is a ear that you know the ear so in the ear we know that is one disorder that is known as the otitis media what is the otitis media this is what otitis otitis media otitis media 
otitis is what ear otitis the ear inflammation of the middle ear otitis media is inflammation of the middle ear and for we will see the nasal septum perforation we will see the nasal septal perforation see we have the uh, between the nasal we have the we have the nasal septum so and also when we are like putting some uh, like you saw the any children so who are putting the pen inside kuch bhi andar dal lena hai na so they are what they are, they are doing something like this and again the, uh, the bleeding has been start so what they do they having something like the erosion the the, uh, the artery of epistaxis here and also when we are doing the like if somebody put the till the end so there is the there is septum will be perforated that's we called the septal nasal septal perforation the nasal septal perforation and also remember we have the teeth what type of the teeth who likes the strawberry i know many of you like the strawberry okay so sto when the strawberry comes the fruit don't comes in your mind any other things comes in your mind right so we have the strawberry gums so what we have what should be come in your mind gums should become uh, comes in your mind so remember when the ear we have the nasal septal perforation we have the teeth and the teeth we will see there is strawberry gums strawberry gums will be there we will study everything like strawberry vagina the strawberry vagina is seen in trichomonas vaginalis so remember this thing as well and the strawberry gums is seen in case of wagner's granulomatosis the strawberry gums is seen in case of wagner's granulomatosis i hope this is clear now let's continue with the microscopic now let's continue with the my uh, the second anka associated that is the microscopic that is microscopic polyangitis the microscopic polyangitis so this is not important from the crock point of view so i am going little fast here so this is opposite of the this is opposite of polyarthritis nodosa this is opposite of the uh, polyarthritis nodosa and what we will see here we will see the fragmented wbc or granuloma we will see the fragmented wbc and uh, the granuloma will be absent the granuloma will be absent so say like uh, we studied in the wagner's in the wagner's we have the granuloma but here we have the granuloma is absent the granuloma is absent and also remember there is a pulmonary involvement we will study about the pan in the pan we will see there is a pul no pulmonary involvement in pan we will see there is no pulmonary involvement means pulmonary vessels like pulmonary artery pulmonary veins that will never be involved in case of pan but in microscopic polyangitis there will be the pulmonary involvement i hope this is clear the next is churg stross syndrome this question uh, in your booklet so that is the churg stross syndrome in churg stross syndrome remember that this is also known as this is also known as allergic polyangitis this is also known as allergic polyangitis with granulomatosis this is also known as allergic polyangitis with granulomatosis with granulomatosis this is granulomatosis c we have the c so c we can write like the c and from the c we can see e this is the c and from the c we can we make the e so remember they have the eosinophilic granuloma they will having the eosinophilic granuloma if you know these things you will be able to understand that this is the churg stross syndrome okay because in the end we need to solve the crock questions just by the keyword also because sometimes they will not give you complete history they will not give you complete diagnosis they will not give you complete lab test report and everything they will not write everything so again further we need to find those questions by the with the help of the keywords so we will having the eosinophilic granuloma will be in this condition in churg stross syndrome remember this will we have in the churg stross syndrome we will be having p anka in the p anka positive they will be p anka positives okay this is the p anka positives see uh, p anka positive this is uh, also seen in case of ulcerative colitis this is also seen in 
ulcerative colitis it means the ulcerative colitis we study we know that uh, crohn's disease ulcerative colitis so the ulcerative colitis is also the p nk positive and there is one more condition like psc so what is the psc primary sclerosing cholangitis primary sclerosing cholangitis primary sclerosing cholangitis in that condition also we will having the p nk positive okay i hope this is clear so we have the nk associated first we will having the wagner's granulomatosis then second we will having the microscopic polyangitis third we have the churg stros syndrome and churg stros syndrome also known as the allergic polyangitis with granulomatosis and there is eosinophilic granuloma and here we are visiting what small vessels vasculitis the next let's talk about the pan khata bachcha or pkb pkabu you can remember the pkabu in all english students remember the pkabu so pkabu we have the p for pan which are full forms a and ka anti nuclear cytoplasmic antibody i will write it here anti nuclear cytoplasmic antibody anti nuclear cytoplasmic anti nuclear cytoplasmic antibody okay pnk the peripheral okay that is what then uh, we have the middle vessel vasculitis the middle vessel vasculitis middle vessel vasculitis see in the middle vessel vasculitis what we will see pkb or the pkb you can remember pan or we can remember pan khata bachcha so p4 remember polyarteritis nodosa polyarteritis nodosa so let's first discuss about the polyarteritis nodosa so what happen in the polyarteritis nodosa so this polyarteritis nodosa remember this is associated with the 30% uh, 30 to 40% of the blood vessels and this polyarteritis nodosa it is positive with it is positive with hepatitis b it is positive with hepatitis b so if you have if the patient will be having have the hepatitis b there can be the possibility of the uh, polyarteritis nodosa so remember we have the hbs antigen positive or the austre uh, this antigen is also known as the australia antigen this antigen is also known as the australia antigen so the polyarteritis nodosa it is positive with the hepatitis b so there will be the hbs antigen positive or australia antigen positive now the in case of polyarteritis nodosa see these are all are the vasculitis so we should remember which is the most common vessels affected in all these conditions so the most common vessels affected the most common vessels affected in small vessels we can understand that there is a small vessels so capillaries or the venules or the, that things will be affected but in polyarteritis nodosa the renal vessels will be affected more the renal vessels affected more the most common vessels affected is the renal vessels and which vessel is spared which vessels is spared that is i just told you just let tell me which vessel is spared you should have that energy of that just me write it oh i just studied it now and let me write it again, again on the chat box i will be the first so which vessels will be spared in the polyarteritis nodosa we just study that is pulmonary yes that is pulmonary bilkul what is the name hamza hasan very good pulmonary that is pulmonary uh, what was pulmonary circulations we can write pulmonary circulations or the pulmonary vessels will be affect vessels will be spared so all the pulmonary vessels will be spared but uh, there is a pulmonary involvement there is a one vasculitis where there is a pulmonary involvement what was that uh, microscopic with polyangitis in that condition there will be the pulmonary involvement microscopically we will, sometimes we will see the in uh, polyarteritis nodosa the microscopically microscopically 
microscopically what we will see we see there is a segmental we see there is a segmental transmural transmural i hope transmural means all the vessels are affected so that is the transmural segmental transmural fibrinoid necrosis transmural fibrinoid necrosis so that can be there so polyarthritis nodosa again you need to remember which is the most common vessels affected the renal vessels and pulmonary circulation vessels will be there okay again i told you there will be the eosinophilia there will be the uh, yesterday i told you there will be the eosinophilia there will be the eosinophilia okay <clears throat> and this is example of so remember fibrinoid polyarthritis nodosa is example of which necrosis fibrinoid necrosis uh, i remember write it here fibrinoid necrosis so fibrinoid necrosis you can remember the three things what are these like all the letters ending with three words so p a n polyarthritis nodosa then rheumatic heart disease r h d rheumatic heart disease polyarthritis nodosa systemic lupus erythematosus systemic sle three words then again there is a malignant hypertension malignant hypertension so in all these conditions with what uh, necrosis will be there we will see fibrinoid necrosis in all these condition what we will see fibrinoid necrosis pan three all three words pan rhd sle uh, htn so remember there will be the fibrinoid necrosis the next one that is very 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 only seen in the only seen in the children so what is that kawa oi kawa kawa so that is kawasaki disease that is kawasaki disease kawasaki disease it is a common in the kawasaki disease if you know we already studied in the croc one i hope this one you know you know uh, where i taught you about the scarlet fever and below the scarlet fever we discuss about the kawasaki disease the kawasaki disease it's more common in the age less than 5 years old less than 5 year old the kawasaki disease is common in the less than 5 year old see for the diagnostic criteria for the diagnostic criteria we take a baby that is known as the cream baby the less than 5 year old will be the kuchu kuchu baby so that's why we will take the cream what will cream so the cry for the criteria we will take the fever we will take the fever and the cream baby the fiber very very cute baby so we take the many many characteristics of that baby and that is four out of five we will choose of the cream baby four out of five so what is the cream c4 conjunctivitis c4 conjunctivitis teri lal lal aankhe uski lal lal aankhe red red eyes so that is conjunctivitis and this conjunctivitis is what that is non purulent conjunctivitis is what that is non purulent i know it tum gana ga rahe ho abhi teri kali kali aankhe theek hai so that is non purulent that is non purulent red eyes will be there then we can see there will be the rash will be there rash will be there there will be the rash and we know that uh, we have the stubby tongues and the rash is the same as in the scarlet fever then we know there is a edema will be there there be the edema will be there the a4 adenopathy so which adenopathy lymph adenopathy will be there lymph adenopathy will be there the lymph adenopathy will be there and mainly the cervical uh, lymph adenopathy will be there there will can be the mucosal involvement there will be the mucosal involvement and mucosal involvement we will see mucosal involvement the mucosal involvement remember the mucosal involvement what we will see there is a red strawberry tongue so there will be the red strawberry tongue the red strawberry tongues we will be there red strawberry tongue kawasaki disease or the scarlet fever see we studied the strawberry tongue we studied the strawberry gum we studied about the strawberry vagina so remember i hope this is clear write me on the chat box everyone comes to chat box strawberry pargana where were you watch i can see a problem 
द स्टोबेरी सी द स्टोबेरी टंग दैट इज सीन इन कावासाकी डिजीज ओके नाउ टेल मी स्टोबेरी गम्स आर सीन इन स्टोबेरी गम्स स्ट्रॉबेरी गम्स आर सीन इन वैगनर्स बिल्कुल राइट वेरी वेरी राइट टीथ एंका कुछ याद ना हो दिस वन यू ऑल रिमेम्बर ठीक है द फीवर प्लस फोर फाइव वी हैव द कंजेक्टिवाइटिस रैस एडिमा लिम्फ एडिनोपैथी एंड द म्यूकोजल इन्वॉल्वमेंट दैट इज द रेड स्ट्रॉबेरी टंग now they can ask you the uh, they can ask you the antibodies as well they can ask you the antibodies against the uh, the seen in case of kawasaki disease so remember they have the anti endothelial cell antibody they have the anti endothelial they have the anti endothelial cell antibody the anti endothelial cell antibodies will be seen in case of kawasaki disease and in the blood test there is a platelets will be there or blood test platelets will be normal or uh, high in the blood test there will be the increase in the platelets uh, we studied that there is a uh, normal platelets level that is seen in that is seen in case of normal platelet normal nor acha normal platelet normal platelet seen in i forgot normal platelet seen in can anyone help me yes okay thank you thank you so much samarkari that is seen in hinox colen purpura and through immune thrombocytopenic purpura in the question they are given already that is a thrombocytopenia so there is a decrease in the platelet here in the option this is not just characteristics findings but hinox colen purpura you need to remember that there is a platelet count will be normal here this is like just take normal findings that is increase in the platelet that is the normal thing okay and which is the most common vessels affected here the most common vessels affected see in the inter, in the in the uh, medium vessels i just told you ki whether it is coronary artery and uh, either it is coronary artery or it can be the mesentery artery or the renal artery renal artery we just took that it is seen in case of uh, polyarteritis nodosa so there is a two remaining coronary as well as there is a mesentery this just i told you Th these three i took the name if anyone uh, remember these three just i took the name so we can see also here that we studied uh, medium so in the medium oh i didn't write i i did not write i just speak it out <coughs> so the most common vessels affected in the kawasaki that is coronary artery that is coronary artery so the coronary artery will be the most common vessels affected and the uh, when if there is any this is the most common vessel affected coronary artery if the coronary artery is affected the coronary artery is affected so there will be the the blood supply of the heart will be reduced and that will can lead to the myocardial infarction and that is the most common cause of death in kawasaki oh my god so the coronary artery we have the mi and that will lead to the death that is the most common cause of death in case of kawasaki disease okay i hope this is clear now uh, next is what we have the which one burger or burger burger <clears throat> burger or the burger so next is what we have the burger burger's disease burger's disease see B4, B4 BD, B4 BD, and uh, those who don't know what is BD, BD is the little sister of cigarette. Okay, this is the little cigarette of cigarette. So B4 BD and C, or we even remember B is the little sister of the cigarette or BD. So that is means it is associated with the smoking. This is associated with smoking. See, in the case of the Burgess disease, na. uh we tell to the we tell to the patient bhai first let me speak in hindi bhai kya to bidi chhod de ya smoking karna chhod de ya apna pair chhod de 
what we will say that leave the smoking otherwise you will your uh, legs will be cut down because they we need to again uh, this is the lifestyle modifications we need to say to the patient because this is the major thing that is associated with the smoking and that finally lead to the gangrene or the necrosis of that uh, particular organs and finally we need to the amputate amputate that amputate that uh, organ or the leg and also remember like the burgers we have the burger burger so that is burger so burger disease see the burger disease is iga nephropathy the burger disease iga nephropathy it is not vasculitis it is what nephropathy the burger disease the burger you can remember it burger disease burger disease then remember that if we uh, the that is the look like similar so we have the burger disease you in the you will see that there is a u so u looks like the v u v okay so v we have the u v so that is what vasculitis that is what vasculitis so don't do these silly mistakes burger disease is different one and burger disease is what different one and this is associated with the smoking and this condition is also known as tau this is also known as the tau okay thromboangitis thromboangitis with obliterum thromboangitis with obliterum see we have the tau so here we are can can i also write the tau that is tau protein so tau protein we can see in case of parkinson disease in case of parkinson disease we can see the tau protein so remember this one this is extra information you need to remember tau protein you can remember it is for the parkinson disease tau remember the thromboangitis with obliterans thromboangitis this is also known as the tau thromboangitis with obliterans <coughs> see in burger disease artery vessels nerve artery sorry art not vessel vein or the nerves all will be affected all will be affected which so the questions will not come about the artery vein nerves the questions or the uh, the keywords that can come the lymph are not involved the lymph are not involved we talked in the kawasaki there is a lymph adenopathy but here the lymph are not involved so that is burgers disease again if we talk about the symptoms if we talk about the symptoms these patients will having the intermittent claudication these patients will having the intermittent claudication the intermittent claudication and this intermittent claudications finally it is will having the pain and rest what is the intermittent claudications anyone knows what is the intermittent claudication see if the person is walking 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 if the person is walking and the after the walking after few time after few after walking up to 500 meter he got the pain then in this condition if the person is not changing his or not changing his lifestyle there is a no no modification of any lifestyle he is still doing sutta baji he is still doing the cigarette then what will happen in this patient after some time there will be the Uh, worst conditions will be there and this patient will having the pain at rest so firstly there was the intermittent claudication means pain while during walking pain while during walking but here we will having the pain at rest condition the pain at the rest condition so this is what we have symptoms then after this they, these patients can have the gangrene as well these patients can have the gangrene as well and microscopically what we will see we see the neutrophilic micro abscess we will see on the microscopy this is microscopy me is what microscopy and in the microscopic what we will see neutrophilic neutrophilic micro abscess neutrophilic micro abscess and there is a granuloma inflammation granulomatous inflammation granulomatous inflammation okay so with there will be the symptoms like intermittent claudication there we can be the gangrene and we have the neutrophilic microabscess and the granulomatous inflammations 
the burjas disease they associated with the smoking this is also known as the tau thrombonitis with obliterans they can give in the options they will not give you the burjas but instead of that they can give in the questions thrombonitis with obliterans so means not the same thing the artery veins and the nerves all will be affected the lymph are not involved the symptoms we see in this patient there is intermittent claudication followed by the pain at rest they most microscopically what we will see the neutrophilic microbes and we will see the granuloma inflammation and also that we can see there is a gangrene we see the gangrene that's why i told you initially whether either leave the smoking or you need to cut your organ or the hand or the the, the uh, leg whatever the part is affected okay so this is what we have the medium this is what we have the middle vasculitis <coughs> okay now let's go to the another important taka 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 so taka yasu taka 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 yasu many many questions are in your booklet so let's clear it everything here before that let first the large vessels vasculitis the large vessels vasculitis see in the large vessel vasculitis first let's discuss about the temporal arteritis let's first discuss about the temporal arteritis see the temporal arteritis or we this is also known as the giant cell arteritis this is also known as the giant cell arteritis <coughs> this is also known as the giant cell arteritis okay this is what temporal arteritis or the giant or the giant cell arteritis so in the temporal arteritis remember see we have the temporal here so which is the most common the most common vessel affected the most common vessels affected is what that is uh superficial temporal artery see what happen in this conditions like uh, if i will having this just making the rough diagram see if i is a patient and uh, he having this so this one this is like the temporal so here we will see the nodular like thickening here what we will see we will see the patient will having something like nodular like this type of the this type of the swellings we will able to see the, also the images we, i will send you uh, later on on the whatsapp or because if i will show you see you now that again it will be need to uh, do the searching and it will take the time so we will send after that so uh, in the like in this region i hope you able to see me so here in this regions in this regions we will able to see this type of the nodular thickening so this type of the nodular thickening we will see and this is the most common vessel affected is the that is a superficial temporal artery the superficial temporal artery which is the most common symptom see if we will having something anything will be here like if having uh, we have any problem here so what will be see we will just press that thing so most common uh, symptoms uh, will be the most common symptoms that is headache what we will see the headache the most common symptom is the headache the most common specific symptoms the most common specific symptoms is what that is jaw claudication this comes you will hear lot of lot of time jaw claudication means the jaw will not able to move so that's why we the patient will having the jaw claudication or the jaw uh, jaw pain will be there so the jaw pain will be there then we have the most dangerous symptoms the most dangerous symptoms which is the most dangerous symptoms the most dangerous symptoms which is the most dangerous symptoms we can see in this patient that is loss of vision this eye will be gone no like not full eye but vision will be lost so the love what will be there love will be there he the patient will try to fall in the love but vision is gone so in the love 
वट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ द लव लॉस ऑफ विजन लॉस ऑफ विजन इमिटेड ओके तो लॉस ऑफ विजन इज गोन सो दैट इज लव दैट इज मोस्ट डेंजरस सिम्टम्स एंड वट वी विल नीड टू गिव इफ वी आर सींग द कंडीशन द टेम्पोरल अट्राइट इज पेशेंट एंड इन दैट कंडीशन वी आर सींग दैट दिस पेशेंट इज हैविंग द डिक्रीजिंग द लॉस इन दॉस ऑफ विजन then the treatment we need to give is the steroids and stat what is the meaning of stat i hope some of you know the about the stat so stat means when needed just like urgently okay not the statins it is not the statins it is not a drug immediately is the correct word term so what we will give the immediately that is immediate okay that is immediate that is used in the clinical so steroids will given stat stat means you are giving immediately so that is the most dangerous symptoms okay that is the loss of vision the treatment is what steroid stat that stat that is the immediately on examinations what we will see we will see this type of the thickening and these are known as the examination on examinations what we will see we will see the nodular thickening we see the nodular thickening we see the nodular thickening and on the microscopy when we do the microscopy we will able to see there is a giant cell there will be the giant cell that's why we call this condition see uh, these terms uh, images are not necessary for now and if you are still interested you can just google those images giant cells uh, giant cell in temporal arthritis okay so just to figure out whatever the images are important i will able, i will send in the group but uh, all the images are not necessary so you need no need to go for that see the giant cell we have giant cell plus we have the granuloma the giant cell plus granuloma we will able to see in, in the case of microscopy the granuloma we know that uh, there is a bacterial plus mac macrophage combination so there is a big type of the granules formations will be there okay so remember these things about the temporal arthritis <coughs> here is the uh, your one fmg questions or the uh, for further uh, like if you don't know don't want to remember forget it that uh, which is the special stain we used for it the special stain that we use is a uh, vvg so just remember the name vvg that is the special stain uh, special stain used in case of the temporal arthritis note for the crop two then uh, now the last and all are the important so i can't say this is important that all are the important the taka yasu taka 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 taki taki so that is taka yasu arteritis the taka yasu i remember i yesterday i talked about the steel syndrome <coughs> yesterday i talked about the steel so some kisi ne churaya mera dil so that is steel hai na from the steel what is there the reversal of the blood the reversal of the blood from the vertebral artery into the subclavian artery and then into the axillary artery so there was a weakness in the axillary artery there was a decrease in the there is a decrease in the blood pressure on the affected artery there was a decrease in there is a decrease in pulse rate as well so see in the taka yasu taka 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 yasu the taka when the we will putting the taka so the taka means the pulse has been gone so remember the taka yasu arthritis so there is a pulse less disease this is pulse less disease and this condition is also known as aorta arteritis this condition is also known as aorta arteritis aorta arteritis <coughs> and it mainly seen in case of the people's less than 50 year old this is only mainly seen in less than 15 year or 50 year old and the temporal arthritis it is mainly seen in more than 50 year old people more than 50 year old people <laughs> takayasu arthritis this is known as the pulse less the pulse will not able to feel so which is the most common vessel affected the most common vessels affected see the most common vessels affected this is what large vessel vasculitis so the large vessels will be affected which is the large vessels arch of aorta 
the arch of aorta will be affected and the arch of aorta what they will make they will form the subclavian artery subclavian artery if that will become the narrow or the arch of aorta they will become the narrow there will be the the sub from the subclavian artery the brachial artery from the brachial uh, there is axillary artery then brachial artery radial artery so we will see there is a weak pulse weak pulse and there will be the unilateral why we call that condition uh, in that question the answer was still syndrome why that was still syndrome because they give the complete history about the still syndromes and we are seeing that there is a uh, common carotid artery there was a normal circulation in the common carotid artery there is a, no problem with the arch of aorta there was a problem having the plaque formation in the subclavian artery due to which the vertebra from the vertebra the reversal of the blood flow was there and there will be a neurological problem we see in case of steel syndromes what are the neurological problem we see we see that there can be the headache there can be the diplopia okay i hope, I hope, I hope, I hope. <coughs> this is clear okay so i think uh, we have finished the vasculitis yes we have finished the vasculitis so uh, congratulations we have finished so see in the vasculitis what we studied we have the large vessels we have the medium vessels and we have the small vessels so takayasu arthritis remember which vessels will be affected arc of aorta temporal arthritis which vessels will be affected superficial temporal artery pan khata barcha peri arthritis nodosa renal vessels will be affected kawasaki disease which vessel will be affected in the kawasaki coronary artery will be affected burgess disease all the veins artery vein or you can remember the vein nerves or artery you can remember vein vein artery and the nerves all these van will be affected vein artery the limbs will never be involved then in the small vasculitis <coughs> let me write it like this first second third and third is we have the here that is the third it can be the anca associated or the immune complex in immune complex we have the hsp we have the gps sle anca associated the hinox colon purpura we studied the most common vasculitis in adults that is the gc temporal arteritis then most common vasculitis in children that hsp also known as the iga vasculitis vasculitis that only seen in the children that is the kawasaki digit okay so it is 113 here and uh, i'm giving you just 4 uh, minutes 3 minutes to revise this uh, everything see you don't need to revise everything you just need to read all these things and if you have any doubt you can ask me in between you can drink the water okay see you in the like we will uh, back in just 3 minutes you have you have to just revise everything can you share the pdf in the group which pdf i will share it after uh, after 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 because uh, there is like a note in the series everything is not in the series so i will share it after <coughs> uh, 
रिवाइज 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 गाइस I will share this PDF after. I need to, uh, because it's not in series. So uh, just keep revise everything again. Uh, just uh, one minute. Read everything. Not revise. Just read everything, and come back. Don't left. Otherwise, I will finish you. University Tatyana. ओके आ जाओ कम बैक कम बैक <clears throat> okay so let's okay hello 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 oh, okay uh so let's do the next question a young man has painful induration in the peripapillary regions of the both mammary glands the uh, induration in the papillary regions of the both mammary gland the most reasonable action the most reasonable actions will be see when we are seeing the uh, young man young man has a painful induration so there is a painful induration we can see see there is a painful induration in the peri papillary region so if you have the breast and in the breast if there is a, we have the peri papillary regions of the both mammary gland so if there is any redness is there any redness around the areolar regions or the peri papillary regions where we have the where this is the areolar regions and the, around the areola we have the something redness 
see if anything is inflamed around the breast normally this conditions is seen in case of normally this condition <coughs> this condition is seen in case of the females that's uh, uh, we are talking about the male so let's discuss it like, according to male see if you have the any uh, whatever like male or female so if any uh, reasons is there like around the uh, areola there is a peri papillary regions the peri papillary regions around the areola and there is a something inflammation so we can see there is a uh, one condition that is the breast mastitis the breast mastitis or there can be the abscess formation so would you like to touch there and if any let's suppose if you have any uh, injury any small injury you would you, would you like to touch that because of inflammation so that so what you will do so you will leave these induration untouched that is the so simple questions direct question okay in the peri papillary regions of the mammary gland the most uh, reasonable actions will be to leave these induration untouched don't touch them nahi to main bura man jaungi theek hai so it's like that there is the man so man will say that don't touch my uh, nipples and the, also this is what what we will do we will do this induction untouched and everything will be because that is the inflammations and why we will touch there is a painful induration is there so that's why will not touch so this is the question whatever now let's see the question number 3 <coughs> see the, the question number 3 is again the like not so convenient questions but let's uh, see a 9 year a 9 year old girl with a history of intermittent wheezing for several years what is the wheezing wheezing is ct wheezing wheezing is what ct or the whistle the whistling sound whistling the whistling sound for several years is brought to the pediatrician the child has been the child has been taking no medication for some time he is taking no medication so the physical examination reveal agitation and perioral cyanosis intercostal and suprasternal retractions are present see when we talk about the uh, like any scores in the children we will see the uh, asthma of like uh, many any obstruction disease like asthma copd we will have one criteria that is the retraction of the chest so if there is intercostal or the suprasternal retraction are present that means that patient having the fever type of something the breath sounds are quiet and wheezing is audible bilaterally on the both side the child is admitted to the hospital with what we will not do see the appropriate intervention might include uh, include all of the following except okay so there is intercostal and the suprasternal retraction are present so this patients can having the copd this patients can having the asthma so all these things or any obstructive disorders all these can be possible any obstructive disorders can be possible so the patient will having the history of the intermittent wheezing the history of intermittent wheezing like high pitch there is a whistling sound will be here high pitch whistling sound like this type of the sounds will be here so there we can be the copd asthma or obstructive or we can say upper airway obstruction there can be the upper airway obstruction this is the important point here see there little, little little point but very important the upper airway obstruction means there will can be the wheezing wheezing might be possible so the upper airway obstructions can be there so what we will give normally we know in the asthma or in the copd or in any obstructive disease what we will give we will give the bronchodilator we will give the bronchodilator so let's see the administer the supplement oxygen yes we can give the oxygen because when we are uh, taking the carbon dioxide level will be the more in case of obstructive so we can having the we can administer the oxygen prescribe the intravenous aminophilin what is the aminophilin aminophilin is what bronchodilators aminophilin is bronchodilators so this can be given in case of asthma or the uh, any obstructive disorders we can give the intravenous aminophilin that will help in the bronchodilation then it, we have the prescribe the nebulized metaprotrinol so this again we can give the because this will again help in the bronchodilation we can give the corticosteroids we can give the corticosteroids what the corticosteroids will do it will reduce the mucus secretion it will reduce the mucus secretion it uh, mucus it reduces the mucus secretions 
by inhibiting the release of secretagogues like they have the mucus productions will be there so that will help you reduce the mucus secretions to prevent the wheezing the one more important point here, uh, the one more thing is remaining that is prescribed nebulase cormolin sodium so all these we can give all these things we can give also we can give the nebulized cormolinin sodium okay but which is again the like uh, in uh, other exams also where the uh, options are quite similar we choose the which is the most in here we are choosing the most inappropriate because appropriate are given we are asking accept so we are taking the inappropriate so which is the most inappropriate we will choose that answer so here is the most inappropriate answer is the cormolin sodium because cormolin sodium what they will do they will release the histamine they will they will sorry they will inhibit the histamine cormolin sodium what they will do they inhibit the histamine they inhibit the histamine and when they will inhibit the histamine what the histamines do they cause the bronchodilation uh, sorry they cause the bronchoconstriction and they cause the bronco uh, vasodilation so what they will do when we are inhibiting the when you inhibiting the histamine so what will the opposite of that will be there so bronchodilations will be there yes with that we need it but along with that there will be the vasoconstriction are you seeing that there we are seeing the vasoconstriction we will see there is an increase in vascular permeability so the vasoconstriction what they will do it will increase the blood pressure that's why it is most inappropriate drug for here what is cortico vasodilation histamine yeah histamine is doing the vaso normally histamine will do the vaso dilation but here we are this cormolin yeah the okay okay understand this is cormolin the cormolin is what the inhibiting the histamine the cormolin is doing uh, inhibiting the histamine that is cause the vasoconstriction and the bronchodilation this is the feature of the cormolin what is the i hope everyone knows what is the histamine too what the histamine do they cause the what is the function of histamine write me in chat box bronco constriction or the bronco dilation yeah see before uh, going to the histamines you should having okay let me write it here see the histamine we know the histamine function of the histamine decrease the allergic reaction yes that is what de it decrease the allergic reaction <laughs> this is the type one uh, improve in the type one hypersensitivity but i am asking that what the function of histamine is cause the bronchodilation or the vasoconstriction or bronchoconstriction the histamine cause the bronchoconstriction the histamine what they cause they cause the bronchoconstriction and also on the vessels they cause the vasodilation we cause the vasodilation and also vasodilation along with that there will be the increase in vascular permeability in increase in the vascular permeability now we have the drugs what drugs cormolin sodium cormolin sodium so what this cormolin sodium will do this cormolin sodium what they will do they will inhibit cormolin sodium what they will do they will inhibit the histamine release from the mast cell they inhibit the histamine release from mast cell so mast, histamine release from normally from the mast cell we know so mast, from the mast cell the histamine is releasing so histamine will be inhibited so histamine will be decreased and if the histamine will be inhibited so tell me opposite of opposite of bronchoconstriction will occur means there will be the bronchodilation there will be the opposite of vasodilation that is vasoconstriction will be there there is a increased vascular permeability so if inhibition of the vitamin vascular permeability will be decreased so that why that's what i wrote it here uh, this one i made mistake so here we have the decrease in the vascular permeability will be there so this is due to inhibition of the this is inhibition of the histamine this is the sign of inhibition the inhibition of histamine bronchodilation vasoconstriction and decrease in the vascular permeability 
so due to which blood pressures will be increased that's why it is little inappropriate drug so that's why we choose the prescribed nebulized cormolin uh, sodium this is in uh, like uh, out of all these options this is the most inappropriate intervention that we should avoid out of the option okay i hope this is clear hamza hasan okay thank you so much then we have the fourth routine examination of a child with a history of bronchial asthma the history of the bronchial asthma see in the bronchial asthma what we will be having we will having the bronco constrictions we will having the bronco constriction so it reveals the ap of 149 bronco constriction ap uh, what most likely cause of hypertension this is see nothing related to this point nothing related till here just remember they they just given that what the bp the questions this is the direct questions can i uh, just erase this erase this one i hope everyone wrote it so i'm just erasing it okay see they just give the bp blood pressure they just give the bp and what the uh, bp here that is <coughs> see this question is what bp is given 140 by 90 the bp of the patient is 140 19 the most likely cause of hypertension is hypertension cause the most likely cause this is a question nothing related to the bronchial because they didn't if it can be there like bronchial asthma they say that there is a due to histamine histamine vascular constriction vascular permeability and due to that 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 that, that these things can happen but they didn't give so direct question is that the bp is 140 by 90 what is the cause of hypertension now see hypertension if you talk about the this question like if you talk about the high blood pressures so this high blood pressures high blood pressure high blood pressure it will constrict it will constrict and narrow the renal blood vessels it will constrict and narrow the renal blood vessels so they see if uh, renal blood vessels is constricted so there will be decrease in renal flow there will be the decrease in renal flow or there will be the decrease in the gfr hai na there will be the decrease in the renal flow and there will be the decrease in the uh, decrease in the gfr and there will be the decrease in uh, blood flow so it will stop the kidney to work it will stop kidney from working stop kidney to work well so kidney will not able to work properly now the kidney will not able to work proper, properly now now see high blood pressure was there high i am telling you the high blood pressures that is the leading cause of uh, kidney failure the leading cause of kidney failure the high blood pressure they stop the kidney to works and they causing the damage of the kidney and when the kidney will be damaged there will be the no retention of sodium and water there will be the no retention of sodium and water there will be the no retention of sodium and water if there is a no retention of the sodium and water further that will increase the blood pressure so this becomes the vice versa see high blood pressure was there that can damage the kidney and if the kidney is damaged like if initially the kidney is damaging so there will be the damage of the kidney the kidney is not proper working so that why there is a no retain, uh, more retention no retention in more retention sorry more retention of the sodium and water more retention of the sodium and water because that uh, kidney will not able to absorb kidney will not able to secrete so that's why the more retention of the sodium and water that will increase the blood pressure and remember the uh, hypertension it is the most common cause why it ca can't be the correctation of the aorta we, uh, we will come to that point see uh, the core what is the correctation of aorta tell me okay let me finish this first see there is more retention of the sodium water that why it will increase the blood pressure so the hypertension it is what it is the most common see when the more retention of the sodium and water it will activate the ras system it will activate the oh, 
let me just connect it. Just give me two seconds. See, there is a decrease so more retention of the sodium atom that will activate the that will activate the ras system that will activate the ras system that's why if it activate the ras system they will release the hormones and all these further will increase the blood pressure so any kidney damage there can be the cause of the hypertension and along with that it can be the vice versa is also positive means opposite of that will be the possible or uh, not opposite of that hypertension is the most common cause of uh, renal uh, renal injury is the like uh, the leading cause of the renal injury or the kid or the kidney failure okay then uh, why the answer can not be the correlation of aorta different narrowing aorta in the contraction difference between the bp in lower and the uh, yeah that is a correlation of aorta difference between the bp and the can also cause the bp to go up and so the correlation of aorta what is there is a narrowing of the large blood vessels so if the correlation of aorta will be there that is a narrowing of the large blood vessels so there will be the you will see there is a bp uh, like uh, there will can be the uh, like uh, two different type of the bp the bp in the lower or upper extremities will be different that's why it will not be possible and the most common uh, the most uh, the correct answer here is the renal disease again this question is little bit fuddu and uh, so that's why now let's continue with the question number 5 the question number 5 is what that is the hygiene so i told you the hygiene everything we will discuss in the group so let's see if we are getting the something like the two bed hospital or therapeutic department just i'm reading it and uh, all the explanation everything will be shared in the group the light coefficient so just remember here the if the light coefficient you will get the 1 by 5 that is discomfortable microclimb if you will get the uh, 3 by 5 so that means it it, it can be the <coughs> light coefficient should be minimum 3 to 5 the light coefficient should be minimum 3 to 5 okay this thing you need to remember okay i hope this is clear <coughs> Now the question number six. The child is eleven month old. He suffer from nervous arthritic diathesis. Yeah, that is nothing. See, if we are getting the light, see, normal, so that is the normal light coefficient. The all the hygiene questions I will uh, like put on the WhatsApp group. Okay, with the explanations of all. Normal light coefficients. You need to remember just these things. normal coefficient uh, that is 3 to 5 but if you are getting the light coefficient 1 by 5 so there is a discomfortable microclimate that's why why i am saying see there is a uh, like many similar type of the questions will come so it will be better if we will merge with the like we will do the all these questions together and uh, so uh, that will be the little easy for us and you don't need to worry about the hygiene as i told in the first class those who did not attend just listen it again see the hygiene we have the hygiene this is the like the uh, biggest topic biggest everything like it includes the all the social uh, medicines it include all the ecological things it includes all these right coefficient air temperature so it is it will be all according to the uh, like uh, uh, according to the ukraine curriculums or the ukraine community center so that's why we need to just uh, mug up uh, about all those basics and out of all these 
questions the questions might can be the come that that is little possibility and the new questions possibility that can be uh, like we can see and it's uh, if the questions will comes uh, that that will be repeated uh, from the previous year questions otherwise the new questions will be there okay so don't no need to worry about the hygiene one the psm of ukraine ha why why she jo na because all the social science or the whatever community medicines of that ठीक है, so that we will discuss uh, uh, like in the last phase, so ताकि you will able to easily recall those things. अगर ये subject करने हो ना, ये करो, ये वाले करने हैं तो ये करो, pediatric करो, therapy करो, है ना OBG करो, surgery करो, these are the like four major topics and include the all subjects. तो उसमें से वो जितना whatever time you need to give, give to the give to these things. <clears throat> the child is 11 month old he suffer from the nervous arthritic diathesis the increased synthesis of what acid is pathognomonic at nervous arthritic diathesis see diathesis is what the tendency to uh, just like the tendency of something see so the nervous arthritic diathesis you need to remember see the nervous arthritic diathesis so in or the uh, we can call this neuro arthritic diathesis again not so important point just uh, for the crop point of view you need to remember these things uh, because it's a lot questions from some literature this is not like from the main book but uh, uh, they published this type of the things published in the literature so from there you can remember <coughs> the neuroarthritic disorder this is the metabolic constitutional this is metabolic constitutional disease the metabolic constitutional disease or the anomaly of like uh, uh, like caused by the like disturbance of the caused by the disturbance of any like we have the uric acid the purine matter any metabolic defect will be there that cause the neuroarthritic diathesis the metabolic constitutional anomaly then the name itself they are getting the metabolic that is caused by the uh, disturbance the caused by this is what disturbance <coughs> caused by the disturbance of uric acid and purine metabolism and purine metabolism caused by the disturbance of the uric acid and and purine metabolism yesterday we only discussed that there is accumulation of the uric acid and uh, or the purine metabolisms we already discuss in our crop one times i hope uh, just you should have the little about uh, uh, the purine pathway there is adenine guanine that will form the xanthine then hypoxanthine then xanthine xanthine oxidase is there and allopurinol we know that allopurinol inhibit the xanthine oxidase that is very very important questions allopurinol not just for crop but for uh, further exams as well the allopurinol inhibit the inhibit this is the sign of inhibit inhibit which on which enzyme xanthine oxidase used for the used in the gout okay the cause by the disturbance of the uric acid and the purine metabolisms and uh, also we can having so any like if there is any disturbance in the uric acid or any other metabolic disorders then this patients will having the hyperuricemia this patient will be having the hyperuricemia and this hyperuricemia it it will affect the central nervous system so when the central nervous systems will be affected there will be the neurological problem there will be the neurological problems and this hyperuricemia uric acid accumulations this will also deposit this is also deposit in the knee joints and all they also deposit in the knee joints and all and that will again uh, cause the arthritis problems or yesterday we studied about like gouty arthritis or right? the arthritis like uh, the if there is accumulation of the monosodium urate crystals in the in uh, the knee joints and all so that cause the gouty arthritis the deposit in the knee joints and the holes and hyperuricemia that affect the central nervous systems that's why we called it neuroarthritic diathesis diathesis again you can remember no just you need to remember the uric acid this type of the questions for uh, whatever the topics 
I you need explanations. I will give the full explanation. Whatever the topics you need to remember these things. If I am saying remember these things, don't need to remember those things. Uh, much things like phosphoric acid, sulfuric acid, hydrochloric acid. This uh, medicine is the ocean, so just be limited. है ना? Non uh, neuroarthritic di neuroarthritic uh, diathesis. So diathesis you also can remember that it is what it is the uh, like tendency or like we can call that it is the inherited predispositions. Inherited predispositions. and mainly uh, it uh, like uh, the diathesis or the i am saying the tendency or inherited pre, uh, pre predisposition it's mainly occur due to change of the nutrition or due to alternation of the the alternation or the changing of the nutrition source like if the again the nutrition again it uh, comes from the metabolic background so that's why we are saying that is it related to the metabolic disease or the anomaly okay so remember the nervous arthritic diathesis there is accumulation of the Uh, uric acids and this hyperuricemia or the purine salvage pathway problem that will lead to the uh, neurological problems as well as the arthritic problems that's why the uric acid i hope this is clear uh, there are some more diathesis but uh, we will cover all according to that questions like lymphocytic diathesis uh, because that is just uh, that thing you need to understand nothing more uh, nothing nothing less then we have the question number 7 a 10 year old child complained of the fever see if there is a fever is in the question and there there is a strong history of the there is a fever in the question and uh, frequent painful urinations polyuria urine test we see the proteinuria leukocyteuria entirely within the site and there is strong history of the wbc cast or the leukocytes or there is along with that there is a bacteriuria so what is the most probable diagnosis always about the pyelonephritis again uh, the pyelonephritis glomerulonephritis cystitis we will discuss but here uh, we will just like discuss about the pyelonephritis in details so let's come here i think we will able to cover this in this video yes we have the space so we can here complete it we can complete it here so okay we have the pyelonephritis pyelonephritis see the pyelonephritis what is that it is the infections that is hematogenous or it can be the ascending infections what does it mean by ascending infection or the descending infections this see hematogenous is what the hematogenous root when we called it hematogenous root the root when like from the blood when the spread through the blood when there is a hematogenous spread the hematogenous spread will be there when it is spreading through the blood okay then after the hematogenous spread it can be or we call this infection as the ascending infection we can call this as the ascending infection other all other infections like the cystitis and uh, urethritis they are the descending infection but if we talk about the pyelonephritis that is what we have the ascending infection hematogenous spread and it is more common in the female it is more common in the females then uh, more common in the children during the puberty times children during the puberty times because they can have the, this type of the infections and uh, they are like due to little hygienic we can say unhygienic and uh, also we can seen in case of the pregnancy which is the most common organisms that uh, uh, cause the pyelonephritis the most common organisms that cause pyelonephritis the most common organisms that cause pyelonephritis is what that is e coli the most common organisms that cause pyelonephritis is what that is the e coli the clinical features we see in this patient that is the loin pain the pain what is the loin region anyone what is the loin region i'm seeing the ima uh, images if i find which one is the loin region loin pain okay image i will send you after just uh, listen for now ll cool left lower quadrant okay like this pain the back side pain or the below pain that is the loin pain that is loin region 
so that is a low in pain then these patients will having the fever these patients will having the fever and the patient will having the burning mixturation so during the piss this patient will having the mixture uh, burning mixturation burning sensations will be there we can check the urine microscopy you can do the urine microscopy urine microscopy remember that is the investigation of choice urine microscopy is what that is the investigation of the choice and also in the urine microscopy what we will able to find we will see there is a wbc cast in urine you will see wbc cast in urine so this we will find in case of urine microscopy then also remember for the imaging which imaging techniques we use we use the cect cect and cect remember this is a uh, confirmation for the diagnosis it used for confirmation used for confirmation see first we make the diagnosis based on the history of the complication that is uh, prerequisite diagnosis but after once we check the urine microscopy got the gold standard diagnostic techniques and after that we check for the confirmation so for that we use the cect used for the confirmation of the diagnosis uh and cct also it help us to cct it also help us to uh, differentiate in case of the pyelonephrosis so that is the pyelonephrosis differentiation what is the pyelonephrosis differentiation differentiate the pyelonephrosis from the pyelonephrosis pyelonephrosis differentiated so why what is the pyelonephrosis so pyelonephrosis remember it is the pus filled kidney pyelonephrosis is what it is a pus filled kidney how we will manage this patients we will manage with the help of iv antibiotics the management of this patient will be the iv antibiotics iv antibiotics okay then other conditions we can have this patient so this is uh, also the case of the acute uh, the acute findings like the patient having the fever the pain uh, the low in pain so all these things we can see in this patient and also remember this acute pyelonephritis the acute pyelonephritis we talk that is the also the leading cause of acute pyelonephritis it is a leading cause of it is the leading cause of septic shock the leading cause of septic shock is the leading cause of the septic shock in case of the like uh, pregnancy pregnant ladies now we have the uh, chronic pyelonephritis see in the chronic in case of the chronic pyelonephritis this is the important point and uh, uh, you will able to differentiate based on the feature of uh, the chronic pyelonephritis and the uh, acute pyelonephritis so in a chronic pyelonephritis we will see there is a shrunken kidney we will see what we will see there is a shrunken kidney shrunken kidney the kidney will be shrunk and this shrunken kidney will be asymmetrical means the one kidney will be having the very shrinkage uh, like uh, more shrinkage will be there in one kidney another kidney will having the less shrinkage or or one kidney other can be the normal then also we have the along with the uh, shrunken kidney we can have this patient having the irregular scars will be there the irregular scars might be possible along with that you can write it here that if we are getting the symmetrical if you are getting the symmetrical shrunken kidney symmetrical shrunken kidney so symmetrical shrunken kidney this condition is seen in case of the uh, glomerulonephritis and that is chronic glomerulonephritis that is chronic glomerulonephritis chronic glomerulonephritis chronic glomerulonephritis okay own case of when we are doing the histopathology when we are doing the histopathology examination so what is that histopathology examination write it there own hpe histopathology examinations what we will see we will see the tubular atrophy what we will see the tubular 
atrophy see we have the tubules like we have the tubules and these tubules having the lining and we will see that there is a tubules these tubules will be atrophied these tubules will be atrophied so very very small lining will be there this will be the atrophied the tubules atrophied will be there this lining of these all the tubules that will become the atrophied and that will become the flat lining will be lining will be atrophied and flat other than that on histopathology what we will see we see there is a thyroidization this is important concept in the chronic pyelonephritis see the important remember these things ki in the uh, case of chronic pyelonephritis there will be the thyroidization of pyelonephritis sorry thyroidization of the renal tubules thyroidization of the renal tubules will be there what does mean by thyroidization see this is the renal tubules this is what tubules so this is tubules or the renal tubule you can say the renal tubules now we have the colloid formation inside what we will be having the colloid depositions will be there or let me uh, draw it with the pink color pink 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 no pink okay so there will be the pink color something so there will be the uh, this things colloid deposition or the pink colloid depositions will be there the pink color pink colloid depositions will be there pink colloid depositions will be there uh, within the tubules okay and this pink colloid deposition see this is my renal tubules this is my renal tubules and when in the renal tubules there is a pink colloid will deposit that will make the renal tubules looks like a thyroid gland it will it will make the looks like a it will make the uh, uh, renal tubules that it resembles the thyroid gland that's why we will call this condition as the thyroidization of renal tubules so remember we will have which deposition colloid depositions and why we called it thyroidization because there is a resembles the it resembles what it resembles the thyroid gland along with that we will see the lymphocytic infiltration along with that we will see there is can be the lymphocytic lympho cytic infiltrations we will see the lymphocytic infiltrations we can see the periglomerular periglomerular fibrosis periglomerular fibrosis peri means around glomerular means that is glomerulus so around the glomerulus we will see there is a fibrosis will be there again and in the chronic myelonephritis ulcers on urine microscopy what we will see on urine microscopy we will see wbc cast wbc cast and uh, if i ask you uh, tell me about the rbc cast this pen is not this one so let rbc cast in you in urine this condition is seen in if anyone knows let me write me rbc cast in urine this is condition is seen in this condition is seen in yes glomerulonephritis in glomerulonephritis yes glo g n p glomerulonephritis theek hai g n p that is yes glomerulonephritis r b c cast in the urine okay that is glomerulonephritis so on the urine microscopic pyelonephritis we see the wbc cast and glomerulonephritis is the rbc cast in case of the chronic pyelonephritis we see the asymmetrical shrunken kidney but in chronic chronic glomerulonephritis we see the symmetrical shrunken kidney i hope this is clear